Woohoo! 60th session right now. We're still doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, greetings, everyone. Tonight is the 60th virtual session, which is just, I don't even have words for how crazy that is. Clapping is a good response. Yeah. That's good. Um, I, the, the weirdness about it being the 60th is that I really wish that we didn't have to be at number 60. I wish yes. it had stopped well before this. We definitely thought we'd be back in the pub by now. Well, um, if not three months ago. Remember when we did 20 and we were really like, wow, we've done 20 sessions. Yeah. And now we've done three times as many. Yeah. It's just, it's just, I, I don't know. I don't even know what to say. But we're really glad that um, you guys out there have stuck around. I know some people have been here since the very first session when we really didn't know what we were doing. No? So it's amazing that you've stuck around. We only know what we're doing like 20%. 20%. Oh, 10%. 10%. 20% more. is 20%. generous, I think. <laughs> but here we are. And um, we have some great guests tonight, or leaders tonight, and they are Mario's favorites, both in person and online. So that'll be really fun. Yeah. But the first thing, the most important thing is that at about 2 p.m. today, I decided we should play bingo tonight. Yeah. Because we haven't played bingo since the summer. And so I said to Chris, Do you, would you veto me if I said we should play bingo? And Chris said no. Yep. So here, so here we are playing, playing bingo. So here's how it works. And I'm going to tell the instructions now. And then I'll say them one more time after our set, just for any latecomers that are, um, that are still finding their way to the pub. Um, you only need two things to play. The first one is that you need a virtual bingo card. So um, I'm going to put the link into the chat right now. Here goes. And uh, if you can't access the chat for some reason, you can just go on your computer or your phone or whatever to the Mario soundboard page. And Chris is going to put the link on. Oh, yes, there it is. The, if you go there, the link to the bingo cards is, is um, right on the top of the page as well, okay. if you can't see the chat right now. So you're just going to click on that link. A, a custom bingo card will be generated for you. And then you can actually just click on it. You could try it out if you want. You can click on one of those squares, and it will make an X for you. And if you do it wrong, you can just re-click, and it will go away. So that's the first thing you need. The second thing you need is to be able to, act, to use the chat, because otherwise we don't know if you won bingo. So the way that you're going to yell, yell bingo in the virtual bingo call is by typing it into the chat. And unfortunately, that's the only way we can do it, really. Yeah. Um, so this is hopefully everybody has access to the chat. Um, if you win bingo, then uh, we will send you um, one of two prizes. There can be two winners tonight. Um, and in order to do that, we will need your mailing address, which you need to send to us. We can get to that later, but I just want to tell everybody what all the requirements are to play bingo. Good. It's good to get that out in the open. Yes. Yes. So and you then understand you know what you're getting into. Exactly. Here. Exactly. Um, uh, okay. And then the way it works is when we play a tune, or some of you have little picture squares on the bingo boards too. If the if whatever's in the picture square happens on screen, like it's mentioned or you see it or whatever, then you can also mark off one of those um, picture squares. And the middle square, of course, is the Tune Supply Hummingbird, and you can just mark that one off right away. That's the free square. Freebie. Yeah. Somebody has already asked if they can print out their cards. Yes. Yes. As long as you can chat to us. Yes. We don't care if you mark it online or on your paper. Yes, you can absolutely do that. Um, I have a really creepy... Mm -hmm. Um, power, which is that I can see all of your cards. <laughs> Not the printed out ones. Not the print no, but I can see what the card was yes. before they printed them. So that's a little creepy, but I can see everybody's cards here. So if you do call bingo, if I didn't trust you, which I do, <laughs> if I didn't trust you, I could check. We can verify the bingos. But I do trust everybody who's playing bingo set. I don't think that's going to be necessary. However, no, no, Bob... No be false bingos. No false bingos. Bob yeah. Beamer's all, already yelled bingo. Did you see that? Fired. Um, so no false bingos because we have no way to check. Uh, um, well, I mean, we do have a way, but um, let's just keep everything very, uh, yes. very, very calm and collegial here. Okay, so uh, I think what we should do is play a set of tunes yeah. just to get started, and then I'll just recap all of that for any latecomers Great. after the tunes. So the theme for tonight is, um, this is John Redmond's theme. He comes up with the best themes. Yes. All of the best themes have been his. Um, the theme is the the first tune I learned or remember learning. And I think that part's really important, <laughs> especially if you've been yes, playing for a long time. If you've been playing tunes your whole life, then <laughs> yes. you may not remember. It was actually really hard for me to 
even think about this question because one, I don't really remember. And two, when I was learning fiddle, when I was really, really young up in Fairbanks, Alaska, I wasn't learning what you would call like the pure drop, the pure Irish right. tunage. I was learning a mixture of like Celtic, uh, no, yeah, various types of Celtic music and contra dance music and American fiddle styles. So I can think of all these tunes that I learned when I was little, but they weren't like pure Irish tunes. Yeah. So I did pick out three of the first uh, Irish tunes that I remember learning. And we're going to play those up front here. Strangely, I only play one of these commonly now. Yeah. Um, I don't know why that is, but here are the tunes. Now, if you do have a bingo board, you can mark these off. However, should we tell them the corollary rule? I just remembered. What, what do you mean? It was just, this is where it gets a little complicated. There's three tunes in a set, right? They're going to pop up on your screen here. You have to wait until the tune starts being played to mark it on the board. Yeah. Because otherwise okay. we could have like people putting three marks at the same time. It's not going to matter until we actually get close to winning. But, um, and if you're not an Irish player, the way that you know that the tune is changing is that I will say hup really loudly. And that means we're going into the, to the next tune. Okay, so here's the tunes to start. Sally Gardens, the real, not the air of the song. Mm -hmm. uh, Flowers of Edinburgh and Father Kelly's. We'll play these two times, not too fast. And um, I hope that you don't get too distracted by bingo that you can't join in because that's where, what we're here for is actually to play tunes, not play and bingo. Tunes and bingo. Tunes and bingo tonight, yeah, okay. So, uh, uh, first one, I'll just play the stars for you. That's the first one, and then Flowers of Edinburgh. And then Father Kelly's, we all know. All in G. I hope you don't get bored. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Oh, one, two, three, four. Thank you. 
off to a bad start. Did you see what happened? Um, yeah, I did see what happened. <laughs> I don't actually know Flowers of Edinburgh. Well, apparently so, I also don't know yeah. it. I, so some people have um, stated correctly that I played Far From Home as the middle tune. Okay. That, which is true. That makes sense. Um, I have see, no idea how Flowers of Edinburgh starts. This is what happens when you don't play a tune for many, many years. Didn't you just say these were some of the first tunes you learned? They were, and I also said I never played them anymore, oh, yeah. which is why I didn't, I didn't play the right tune. Now that I'm trying true. to remember how far, how Flowers of Edinburgh starts. Can someone sing the beginning yeah. for me, maybe? Um, okay, uh, well, put we'll, the ABC notation in the chat. We'll, <laughs> we'll figure out what Flowers of Edinburgh actually sounds like, but for the purposes of bingo, which is really the most important thing tonight, you can mark off Flowers of Edinburgh on your bingo card, even yes. though I did not play it. Mark it off. It was meant actually, to be played. It was meant to be played, and we'll we'll get this um, corrected here <laughs> shortly. <laughs> this presents a big problem um, for like when we do the, cl the cliff notes of the session. When we get it wrong. And when we get it wrong. Yeah. Well, I, well, I always double check it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And yeah. then you put the correct yeah. one? Okay. Well, that's good. Um, of course, I'm like six months behind on that project. But, yeah. <laughs> Time doesn't matter anymore, yeah. so it's totally fine. Okay. So real quick, before we go to our, our first leaders, I'll just say one more time that we are playing bingo tonight. If you are just joining and you want to join us, I'm going to get the link for you and put it in the uh, chat. So all you have to do is click on the link. Here it comes. And that will generate a bingo board for you. Um, you can already mark off the tunes Sally Gardens, The Real, Flowers of Edinburgh, and Father Kelly's. And you can also off, uh, mark off the middle square, which is the hummingbird. And from there, off yeah. we go. Just let us know when you have a bingo or if you have any questions. Somebody said, what is the yellow blob? The yellow blob will reveal itself shortly. So don't worry. Don't mark it off yet. But it will, it will become apparent in a moment. OK. OK. So. Um, we have for our leaders today, John Redman and Matt Stapleton, the Mario's dream team. Mm -hmm. um, if you haven't watched their previous sessions, you got to go back and watch them. They're spectacular, uh, particularly the favorite movies one. Oh, yeah. That was, a, that was a hit. It's one of my favorites. There were costumes. Yeah. And what was the other one? Uh, poetry and Literature. That was good. Mm -hmm. And there's another one. Can't remember. They're, Can't remember. They're all, all good. Excellent. So um, we will get started with those guys, and then uh, we'll see you in a moment. Hi everyone, uh, happy February 11th and uh, happy session number 60. And uh, with me tonight, I'm John Redmond, by the way, and with me tonight is Mr. Matt Stapleton. Matt, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, John, thank you. Very happy to be back here for the session. We have a theme, Matt, and the theme is, what was the first Irish music tune that you remember learning and uh, for me when I think of jigs um, it was uh, saddle the pony and uh, when I think of anything else I think it was the rates of mallow as a polka I learned they're the first two I remember what about you Matt uh, well this would be probably more considered a slide okay. but um, merrily kiss the Quaker was one of the first one of those I cool. learned. All right, so why don't we start off with the um, a jig set then? Saddle the Pony, uh, which was the first one I learned, into maybe My Darling Sleep, and into Merrily Kiss the Quaker. So um, these are in the keys of G, A, G, D, and G. So twice each, Matt. One, two, three, four.
That was a great start. Mm -hmm. um, somebody had a good question, Gail, in the, in the comments. She said um, that John mentioned the name of a tune that he did not play, and could we mark that off? Sorry. No. It's only tunes that get played. Yep. Um, I know it feels like I'm making rules up as we go, uh, which I am. That's, that's a, <laughs> this is not scientific bingo. Okay, but th that rule has been in place since the first round of bingo that's true. over the summer. That's true. Although with, this, with the pictures on the board, we did say, like, if, if the thing in the picture on your board is mentioned, then you can, right. you can mark it. Right. But for tunes, yeah, it's got to be played. It has to be played. Um, that's interesting that I put, one, put a, a, a tune on there that isn't going to be played, but that John mentioned. Maybe he's going to play it later. Oh, yeah. So that, that could be it. Actually, if, you, um, if you're looking for tunes to learn, all of the tunes that I picked to put on the bingo board are, com are commonly played Mario's tunes. So yes. you could use that as a, um, a way to practice up your tunes. Yeah. Someone just asked if John plays C sharp D. Um, no, I believe John plays a BC box, actually. Um, Mr. D. McShane. Oh, he sent in a picture oh, yeah. for, for later. Um, yeah, so Chris plays C sharp D. I, and I badly play C sharp D. You play it very well. <laughs> and David Munley plays C yes. sharp D. And who are the other well known C sharp Ds? Uh, There's somebody else that we we were just listening yeah, we to. Were just talking about. I can't remember. Um, okay, so we forgot to tell you what the prizes are for winning bingo, which is really the most oh, yeah. important thing about bingo. So do you want to show them yeah, one yeah. of them? Prizes there's, are, there's actually two prizes. There's two prizes. One of them is a Toon Supply t-shirt. Actually, it's a, either a t-shirt or a sweatshirt, right. whatever you want, any color or size that we have in stock. Which admittedly is not very many left. Uh, there's not many of the sweatshirts. There's yeah. a few t-shirts. Um, so those are, this is the maroon sweatshirt. Yeah. So that's one of the prizes. And then the other prize that um, just got, the reason you don't know about it is because it just happened for the session. Oh. Mary wanted to make the second prize um, a box of scones. Oh, sent, exciting. Yeah. That's actually probably a better prize than Might be. Tune Supply yeah. merch. Um, and I would have got a, I would have had a, a picture to put up on the screen, but she, yeah. she told me just before the session started. And actually, Mary is watching um, with TJ, I guess, in the pub right now. Oh, cool. In the East Village. Um, so, hey to Mary and TJ. Um, yeah, so the only uh, caveat on the scones is you have to live in the U.S. Um, we can't ship the scones right. to other countries, unfortunately. Customs. Yeah. And probably for the t-shirts, too. Uh, yeah, we might be able to work something out. Might be able out. to work it out. Maybe. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. Okay, we'll see who wins. Um, cool. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, this is quite special, actually. We received a package in the mail the other day, and it contained a couple of things. Contained two CDs. Uh, this one is called Fun Songs by Peter Rahill. And this one's Let's Be Frank, also by Peter Rahill. And also in this, in this um, package was something we've been talking about the whole session, Peter's homemade limoncello. He sent us some in the mail, yes. which I'm pretty sure is cool. illegal. Um, so we, we've we been feel... storing it in the freezer um, <laughs> as directed, and we're going to enjoy it a little bit here. Yes. Um, so if you all are having a little sip of something at home, well, we can have a cheers. It, it I'll start with that. Strong, yeah. so. Okay, okay. We haven't tried it yet, Peter. Yeah. This is the first time. And um, the, this limoncello was the, the talk of the session no. near the start of the session because Peter told us his recipe, which you can find on the soundboard page if you would like to make... Did you get limoncello on the piano? Yeah. <laughs> no. It'll probably make it sound better. Yeah. If you want to try making limoncello, the recipe is on the soundboard page. I think that you have to be growing your own lemon tree in the backyard, though. Is that a requirement? I'm pretty sure. Okay, <laughs> okay so we'll have a little a little slancha here. Okay, cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers to, to you Peter out there. Rahel. Okay, yes, and to Peter. Oh. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> okay, I have to say, I've had the commercial version of limoncello and don't love it. But it doesn't, this, yeah. this is something else. That's great. This is amazing. Okay, one more sip before mm. we go on here. Oh, wow. I'm going to need some more of that later, I think. <laughs> Spectacular. Yeah. Thank you, Peter, for sending us this. You guys are all missing out if you don't have this in your glasses tonight. Wow. Whew, incredible. Okay. And it's good, really cold, too. I, I think that's yeah. important. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, was that the yellow blob? Oh, yes, that's the yellow blob. That was the yellow that's blob right, on, your bingo, <laughs> on your bingo card. <laughs> There's a picture of limoncello that I stole off the internet. Yeah. Um, so if you have a little yellow blob, if, maybe if you're on your phone, it will be really small. You can go ahead and check um, check that off right now. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we're going to move on to the set that John actually recorded um, a video for, which I sent out to you guys late last night, sorry. 
Um, I think it's Rios or Jigs? Uh, it is Rios. Rios. Yeah. Okay, so here you go. Have fun playing long. Welcome back, everybody. Um, we're going to continue with a few reels. And I recorded these uh, recently, uh, slowly for Tune Supply. Uh, so hopefully you'll be able to play along with them. Uh, the first one is called Mayor Harrison's Fedora. The second one is called Patty Taylor's. And the last one is a few different names called the Mayor of, no, Mayor of Nothing. It's called the uh, the Maids of uh, Tully Knock Brine or James Byrne or uh, The Rat in the Thatch. It's a Donegal tune, the last one. So they're in the keys of E minor, D mix that, and uh, G, and we'll do them twice, twice, and three times. All right. <laughs> One, two, three, and...
Okay, we have a possible bingo, which doesn't seem statistically likely, but it could be. It could be. So um, we're going to check on that. Okay, so Terry Motter uh, says she has bingo. Wow. So I can see all the bingo boards here. Perhaps, Terry, if you can put in, there's a little, um, uh, I said that I, t I trusted everybody, and now I'm not trusting everybody. <laughs> put in the, the code from your bingo board. Because I just want to, this seems amazing. I have to tell you guys, when you make these bingo boards, it's very st uh, uh, interesting from a statistics standpoint because yeah. it tells you, based on how many like tune names or whatever you put into the bingo board, um, what the likelihood is that you'll get bingo by a certain number of right. draws right. based on the number of people playing. And all of these variables, we have no idea like what they're going to be beforehand. Yeah. So this, yeah. is, this is quite interesting. Okay, so... So put your number in there. I just want to check. I just want to check. I, I trust everybody, but I just want to check. Peter says, trust, trust but verify. Trust to verify. Trust to verify. Yeah. Okay. We don't want to, we, we don't really know if anybody's calling bingo in the bingo hall without, it's true. without um, a backup yeah. on their, on their boards. Yeah. Have you ever been in a bingo hall when that happens? No. Um, no. It's bad news. Hmm. It's bad news. Um, okay. So we will continue on for now. And uh, what do we have next? Oh, okay. So the theme today is... Um, yeah, the first tune that you learned or remember learning. Some of you have been putting your answers in the chat. If you have not done that yet, I would love to hear what the names of the tunes are. I find it fascinating because it's really based on like where you were geographically when you started learning. Yeah. Like the Alaskan tunes that I learned first were really not what I play now right. with, with, with few right. exceptions. Right. And your first tunes are Slevmont Odd. We're going to talk about yeah, that later yeah. for, your, for the last set. But yeah, let us know. Um, let us know what your uh, what your first tune was. And meanwhile, while you're doing that, we have just a few community pictures because this one was a hard one to actually like take a picture of something. But some people did it. Yes. Okay, so let's see what we've got. First up is Angela Botzer with a picture of her, the sheet music of her first tune, Conman's Rambles. And that looks like it's from O'Neill's to me. Yeah. Angela, you'll have to tell us if that's true. Okay. okay. I don't know what this is, actually. Uh, okay, this is... Um, the Dan, right? Damien oh, McShane. Damien. Damien McShane. Trip to Sligo. Yes. Oh, Trip to Sligo. First yes. Tune. Yeah, good. So his first tune was Trip to Sligo, and this is him in 1976 uh, on a trip to Sligo. Yeah. So that is pretty awesome. Okay. Okay. Jill Yeager sent this in. Okay, this is Saddle the Pony. Saddle the Pony, and she said she learned it at Swananoa mm -hmm. from Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell. Colin's on the session next week. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Is that already next week? I think so. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Great. And one more. Oh, this is uh, from last week, right? Yes, this is from last week, and this is uh, I, we just didn't get a chance to put it on. This is uh, Rick and Melinda Halford in, in North Carolina, and they were showing an unexpected treasure because that was the theme last year. Uh, last, last year, oh my God, last week. Um, and it's some gnomes that have been showing up in a, in a tree near their place. Yep. And that's a lot of snow for North Carolina, it is, I think. Yeah. Um, good. Okay. And then we have, this has nothing to do with um, the theme, but I just want to show you guys something amazing that happened yesterday. We were working away as we have been lately. And, um, we, uh, we got noticed that there was something waiting for us down at the, at the front door of the apartment building. And we'll just show you what it is here. That is, um, two huge containers of food from Mary O's that she delivered to our door unexpectedly yesterday and we're very grateful that for that because we're um so backed up with work right now that we haven't had a chance to really like eat yes or sleep or anything like that so, so now we have two delicious pots of food yes and you ate some right go. before the session I ate some today and i ate some yesterday <laughs> uh, probably eat some later today absolutely so thank you so much mary the timing is perfect because we've got the um the big event coming up i'm not going to say the name of it because it's on the bingo boards right but um thank you for sending that to us and there were two other, uh, no, one other submission in the, that we got an email, but it didn't have a, a picture attached to it. So it was Peter Flory, and he said his first tune was um, Merrily, Merrily Kiss the Quaker, played by an incredible guitar player named Pierre um, Ben Susan, I think that's how you pronounce it, cool. um, who I know of, but not as, a, not as an Irish tune player. So I'll have to go check that out. Cool. Have you heard him? Mm -mm. Really great. Um, okay. So we're going to move right along here to one of our, um, or both of our special guests that are playing together tonight. Um, we have Aidan Connolly, who is like the new favorite of Tune Supply. He's my new favorite. Yeah. And um, he invited a friend of his named uh, Cesar Pastor uh, to play with him. They actually recorded from Spain a few weeks ago, Yes, right? this was, yeah, I think in January. Before the lockdown yeah. started in Ireland. Aidan was in Spain, and they had a chance to play some tunes together. Yeah. 
and um, we finally are getting around to, to showing it now. Yes. So um, enjoy. The last tune is from Northern Asturias, Spain, right? Yeah. yeah. They're going to talk about it. Okay, cool. Here we go. Hello, everybody. Very happy new year. Feliz año desde Madrid here in Spain. My name is Aidan Conley. I've been involved with Tune Supply for a number of months now. So hello to Caitlin and to Chris and to all of the viewers. Um, eso es mi amigo, César Pastor. Hola a todos. Great uh, piper, not only in Irish music, but also the music of Asturias in the north of Spain. So vamos a grabar una mezcla, uh, an Irish reel, the lady of the house, y luego... Luego vamos a tocar una alborada asturiana, la alborada de Baldomero. Uh, uh, traditional alborada from Asturias. So I hope you enjoy them. That's a cool Very tune. Very cool. Um, uh, C uh, Caesar, is it Caesar? Or C Cesar. Cesar also makes reads. Yeah. Um, and you yeah. can find him on Facebook under the name CP Reads if you want to check out his work. Yes. Um, pretty cool. I got to learn that tune now. I like the start of it. It's like it's like um, it's announcing that yes, the, yes. the tune is starting. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Great. Okay, we're still working on the, the bingo situation here. So as they say in the bingo hall, when somebody calls bingo, hold your boards. Mm -hmm. and A good question just came up, by the way, oh. on the bingos. Yeah. Um, somebody's card reads, woman of the house. Uh, lady of the house is not the same tune. It's um, tricky. It's tricky. So lady of the house is a different tune than woman of the house. Yes, so, so make sure you have the correct one. Yes, so you cannot check off woman of the house because that was lady of the house. Correct. Yeah. There might also be woman of the house. There might be. Later. 
Um, okay, so keep keep playing. We're still working on uh, verifying the bingo board. Um, in the meantime, we have for you uh, what has now become uh, a weekly uh, feature, mm -hmm. which is the toast report. We recently adopted a cat, as you might know, and uh, he has turned out to have an immense catinality. A catinality. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so um, one of the things that he loves to do, do you want to talk about his, his love, his primary love in the world? His primary love is dinner time. Um, <laughs> and he loves to come to the table uh, when we're eating any meal. It doesn't matter if he has eaten recently or not. No. He loves to come and beg, just like he was a dog. <laughs> um, so we try to resist the urge to feed him scraps from the table, but we're not always successful. No, he sometimes gets a bite. He does. Um, but he also has this amazing sense. As soon as, if any meat comes out of the fridge, even for five seconds, he knows his, his smeller is yeah. really good. Yeah. So um, I took this video of him uh, while we were trying to cook some um, sausage the other day, and we're going to show you what happens. Yes. Okay, we're having some um, water bison sausage, and here's the toast. Did you want something, Toast? What did you want? What do you want? Do you want this? Wait, what do you want? C can you tell me again? You want some water, Bison? Yeah? How hungry are you? How hungry are you, Toast? You look really hungry. <laughs> oh no. Do you have anything else to say to the camera? Tashti? Anything else? The um, eyes. The that's eyes. our that's our cat toast. Um, just before dinner time. Yes. Um, currently, he is sleeping in Chris's accordion case, which is one of his favorite spots. Yeah. Um, and Kim Harris is the first one to point out that I uh, said water bison <laughs> instead of water buffalo. Yeah. Good job, Kim. I posted that on Facebook and nobody caught it. No one noticed. <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to comment. I, I was waiting too. Um, Okay, so if Toast is on your bingo board, you can go ahead and mark off Toast. I believe that he's on some boards uh, sitting next to a concertina. Ah, yes. So you can go ahead and, and mark that off. Um, okay, we are going to continue looking at the mystery of the bingo boards. Keep going with, uh, with marking things off, and we will have another set from John and Matt. Okay. Here we go. Uh, welcome back, everybody. We're just going to continue with a, uh, a few more reels. Uh, the uh, first one is called The Mountain Road. The second one is called Tommy Peoples. And the uh, last one is called The Wind That Shakes the Barley. The matter in DGD, the three times each. Right. One, two, three, and.
Nice. Okay, we have another possible bingo. Possible bingo. And now, since I am making everybody verify, which I said I wouldn't, I'm going back on my word. Well, I think we should verify. Trust but verify. Yes. Um, as Peter Rahill said. Um, so These the, are high value prizes, so they, we got to verify. They are high value prizes. Yeah. That's absolutely true. Um, so uh, Richard Halford um, has called bingo. And so, Richard, if you can send me the code that's on your board, just in the chat. It's just a bunch of numbers and letters. I mm -hmm. also can look it up here, but if you can do that, I can look it up faster. And then if if uh, if you have a bingo, and also Terry, we have your boards on screen and we don't think there's a bingo. Oh yeah, she just said, um, uh, Father Kelly, Snowy Path, X, Patty Taylor's Flowers of Edinburgh. We haven't had Snowy Path yet. Oh yes, yeah, Snowy Path yeah. has not occurred. So I know that it's going to be uh, possibly played later. Yes. Well, we know it's gonna be played because the set list was uh, Yes. On online. But we have it, not played Snowy Path. So unfortunately, Terry, that is not a valid bingo. It, it has to be played before yeah. you can mark off the box. Okay, yeah. so. And Richard, um, uh, I think Richard said he doesn't have the code. So just uh, send us a picture of your, <laughs> of your board if you're doing it on paper. I bet I can look it up. Okay, so we'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep going. Now, hold your boards because we do have two prizes. So even if Richard has a bingo, yes. um, there's another prize. So keep going and, and let us know when you get a bingo. In the meantime, here's another one that you can mark off. We are doing our fifth epic concert um, here at Tune Supply on Sunday, which is Valentine's Day. Hopefully everybody, everybody remembered that holiday. Um, and Chris put together a promo video for the concert, as he always does. And this one is particularly awesome. So we're just going to show you to get you excited for the concert on Sunday. Here we go. <laughs> dancing along here yeah. that people were wondering what that tune was yeah. when we posted this video um, on YouTube it's uh, it's called the sump pump really yes <laughs> and it's played in this video it's played by Mari Black and Anna Colleton and Francis Cunningham yes and they're in a set with um, Shannon Heaton she wasn't on that little clip yeah. that you just heard but she'll be in the in the set for Valentine's Day so um, the concert is on Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern there will be, I believe, we're up to exactly 70 performers this time, which is about normal now. Yeah, yeah, that's a normal concert. Yeah, these are these are marathon concerts, um, but there's there's just five minutes per person in the concert, and some a bunch of people are in groups, so it goes by really fast. Although it lasts a long time, yeah. it's it's quite an event. Um, and if you want more information, I'll put the link in the in the comments in just a second. Um, the, these concerts are run entirely like the session through community contributions with the idea being that we try to get enough people watching the concert and sending a little bit of money and that we can send um, a New York gig wage over to everybody who's in the concert, which is difficult to do with that many people. A non-union gig wage. A non-union. Let's, <laughs> so let's be clear let's here. Let's be clear here. <laughs> a non-union. still pandemic time, I should say yeah. I should say a, a session gig wage. Yeah. A normal yeah, New York yeah, session yeah. gig wage. So um, if you would love, like to come over and watch the music, listen to the music, it's free. But if you can uh, support our goal to try to help musicians out during this continuingly disastrous time for the arts, um, that is certainly uh, much appreciated. So I'll put a link in so you can go check it out. But otherwise, 6 p.m. Sunday is the time to remember on this channel. And if you had the Valentine's Day poster on your board, you can go ahead and mark that off. off. Yep. Um, okay, so let's see. Let's do another set of tunes, and Richard wrote his code in there, and I'll just so check. We'll, go, we'll verify the, the bingo, and here are, I think, some slip Re jigs. Oh, slip jigs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. From okay. John and Matt. Great. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, Matt, I realized that in all the sessions that we've done, that I don't think we've played any slip jigs. Really? Uh, really? No. Yeah. What about time that we did? Yeah. Okay, so... Um, first one is called The Snowy Path. Um, it's in D. And the second one is The Cock and the Hen or Ryan's. It's in F-sharp minor A. 
And the last one, I don't have the name for the last one. So if anybody in the chat knows the name of it, it'd be great to find out. And it's in D minor. So, so uh, three times each, Mark. One, two, three, and...
That was um, that was a woo courtesy of uh, Ricky Helford, who just won the switch. Oh, good tie-in, yeah. excellent! It wasn't actually um, he who made the woo, though, correct? Yeah. yeah, I don't think so. It was one of his the dogs. dogs. Yeah. Capo and Kaylee are yes. his dogs, um, and Melinda's dogs, and they're extremely cute. Um, J. Patrick three seventeen has a bingo. Oh, great! There's another bingo here. Okay, so J. Patrick three seventeen, just because we're trusting and verifying, send us the little code. Um, on your bingo board, somebody had to tell uh, Rick how to find it. Or if you don't, if you don't have the code, just snap a picture of it and send it to Tunes at Tune Supply. Or even more easy, tell just me. Just tell us what the row is. Tell us um, what your name is on the card because oh, yeah. I, I can search yeah. by that. Okay, great. So um, Richard Helford has selected the sweatshirt. Good mm -hmm. choice, but only because he just had Mario scones, yes. and I know that because uh, Mary told me that he had a conversation on the phone with Mary oh, yes, the other day, right, yeah. which was great. Um, okay, so... Uh, Harris just asked, was that Redekin's mother? No, that was no. not Redekin's mother. Redekin's mother is still in play, if you have that on yes. your board. Yes, We don't know the name of that last tune. If anyone has that, oh. um, let us know. Yeah, I should say that um, the, the word gananam means unknown uh, in Irish. Emer, correct me if I'm saying anything wrong here, but that's my understanding. And John did not know the name of that last tune. So if you have gone on them on your board, you can go ahead and mark that off. And extra credit, if anybody knows. Is it Elizabeth Kelly's? Peter Morley says Elizabeth Kelly's. Oh, I don't know, actually. I, don't know. I know the tune, but I don't know yeah. the name. Um, okay, where is um, Don? Oh, Don says Tune Pal thinks. What does he say? Hold on. Don always have, has the percentage. Uh, the maybe March 60% confidence. Hmm. hmm. Okay, well, we'll keep working on this. There are many well, mysteries yeah. tonight. Um, oh, that's it. Okay, he says that's a march on a subject. Uh, okay, so um, it's time for the poem. It's after the halftime, but we put the half we put the poem later today. Yes. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, hear from Mimi and maybe Amos. We'll see. Hi, Mario's friends. A very bad poem in honor of uh, Valentine's Day. Roses are red, violets are blue. How happy we are to spend Thursdays with you. Love comes to us in ways that might vary, but in this case it started with Caitlin and Mary, with a wee friendly session in an East Village pub where we'd play tunes, not drink enough, and have some yum grub. Now our session has grown like a big global family, with tunes, groovy sweatshirts, and jokes told so hamily. Caitlin and Chris, you are superstars. Happy Valentine's Day to all near and far. Please chip in to the box. Help us pay our, our leaders. And please support Mary if you can. Um, either buy scones, which are amazing. I'm working through a bunch this week. Or better yet, um, help her help those in need in the community. The low-income elderly on the Lower East Side or East Village she is um, bringing shepherd's pies to them in their, in their need. So uh, thank you, Caitlin and Chris, all the superstars tonight, John and Matt. Um, hope you're all wearing your double up mask. That's the thing. It's the new style. Thank you, Dr. Fauci. Um, keeps us 95% uh, untransmissible. And please um, eat your kibble. And uh, we, we see you soon. <laughs> oh, wow. the eyes at the end. That's a good one. Um, Amos is double masking there. That's I good. saw that, yeah. yeah. Amos's eyes, when he's looking for the kibble, look just like Toast's it eyes does. when he's looking for the water bison. Toast behaves very much like a dog. <laughs> yes. I forgot to say also, Toast's second favorite activity is snuggling, which is very oh. rare for cats, I think. Yeah. I'm not a cat expert like you, but... It, it's well, fairly rare. It's like the cuddliest cat I've ever encountered. He spoons you, and yeah. it's amazing. It's yeah. great. Okay, we have important news. Uh, we've confirmed J. Patrick 317's bingo. Um, yes. So you are the lucky winner of... Of uh, Well, let's say that you can either have a t-shirt or some scones sent to here to yes. you. So let us know which of those you want, um, either in the in the chat, or you can just send an email to us, tunes at tune.supply, and we need your address too, so we can send you whatever it is that you yes. choose. I just noticed that my nose is really red on screen, and I think it's because of the it's lemoncello. It's probably because of Peter Rahel's <laughs> lemoncello. I'm going to stick with my tea, I think. Okay, well, I, I might feel, finish this off here. It's really good. Okay. Yeah. 
So, um, yes, we neglected to mention up to this point because we were so into bingo that this whole session uh, thing that we're doing, which we're now we're on number 60 tonight, um, runs on community contributions. We've been able to uh, pay, it's some, I have lost track, but it's something like 200 uh, leaders and guests now. I think it's a, more than that. Mm -hmm. Um, for their uh, their leadership, their leader position, and their special guest positions, um, and we want to keep that going as long as we have to. So your uh, contributions allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. um, In normal times, we have this beautiful contribution box. Yes, um, which gets passed around at the session, and you can imagine yourself throwing your spare change or $100 bills in there <laughs> um, while you imagine yourself drinking that beautiful pint of Guinness and um, playing a tune with there. Kevin yes. and Mimi. And Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, and I have neglected to put the link in the comments, but I'll, I'll do that in just a second. Um, you can also find it in the description of this video if you want to um, throw a few bucks um, towards our leaders tonight yes. and guests. Um, one more amazing announcement, uh, which is that Mary's son, Patrick, I think they might be watching. Mary's son, Patrick, got into uh, Trinity College Dublin. He just found out today. And <laughs> Very, very exciting. And, congratulations. Uh, yes, we want to say congratulations to him. And um, I think he, I think that's where he's going to go. Yeah. Uh, Mary said that was that was his top choice. Great. So, awesome. Very, very cool. Congratulations. Yeah. Okay. Anything else happened in the comments um, while I was talking? I'm going to, yeah. Patrick is wondering how he receives his prize. Oh. Um, uh, JPatrick317, I'll put uh, some instructions here in the chat. Yes, and I will tell you what this next set is that we're going to do. We're, we've been doing a middle set for the last couple um, sessions here. So we're going to do um, a couple of tunes that I taught in my Irish Art Center classes last week. Um, we did some level two tunes at, at last week's session, and tonight we're going to do some level four tunes. So we'll do Rolling Waves number two. Now, it isn't actually called number Rolling Waves number two. I just call it number two to differentiate from the more common rolling waves that we all play quite it's a lot. at least more common at Mario's. I don't yes. know if it's actually more common. That's true, yeah. So um, Mar uh, rolling waves number two first, and then we'll go into a tune called the Yellow Wattle. And then lastly, Cat's Rambles to the Child Saucepan. And remember, you can't call bingo until the tune happens. So Are we still doing bingos? We've had... Yeah. We've had well, let's how many do... bingos are, are we? I said three there were two, but let's do three. Okay, Why not? So there's one more bingo to be had. Hopefully you haven't thrown your cards out. Yeah, and the, the third bingo will be a, a tunes play t-shirt. So um, yeah, keep going, and here we go. So uh, Rolling Waves number two starts like this. Instead of the very similar Rolling Waves number one, which we won't play because I'll get confused. Yes. Okay, here we go. Um, one, two, three, four.
actually played the right tunes. I don't know. I, I don't know those tunes. So. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Okay, so we had some more bingos. We had a lot of bingos. Um, I think we might run out of prizes here. Yes. So uh, I think that um, the three prizes have been claimed. We'll just go over them real quick. So uh, Rick Halford um, that was chose the sweatshirt. The sweatshirt. Right? Yeah. What did um, What did the second person we choose? We don't know what Jay Patrick um, oh, yeah. 317 won. Let me just see if he has emailed us. Okay. And then the third person, I'm pretty sure, is Peter Morley. Is that correct? Let me just check real quick. We will we will verify that in a in a uh, second. Gail and Brian Feeney actually called oh, were bingo they at least on my screen. They called bingo just before Peter Morley. Okay, so they're the they're the third one. Yeah. So um, let us know what you would like. Um, this is complicated. I don't think about all the complications that can happen in bingo yeah. before we. Well, Jay Patrick three seventeen has his um, next <laughs> he, choice. He has to so, tell us yeah, first. Yes. So if Jay Patrick three seventeen, if you're still in the virtual pub, tell us what you want. And then uh, that will leave the third uh, item for Gail. Brian and Gail Feeney. Brian and Gail Feeney. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So you can continue yelling bingo if you'd like. Yeah. I would like that, actually, if yes. you continue yelling bingo. I think we're to the point in the game when everybody is winning bingo. Yes. There's going to be a lot of bingo. Sadly, we have um, no more prizes to give. But we will play bingo again. Yes. Um, you know what I would love to do sometime is play, I don't know how you do this, but play anti-bingo, anti where you what see, like, I don't know how it would work. It's just theoretical in my head. Like... It would be the person with the least number of things covered oh, yeah. on their board at the end. By the end of it, yeah. Who has the saddest board. The saddest board yeah. prize. It would be like the Red Lantern um, in the dog mushing races in Alaska. Like the, the person who arrives last oh, the, it gets, yeah. a, gets a special prize. Yes. Um, I think you'd have to play straight through to the end, though. Probably. In order to, like, right. everybody would have to play to the end. Yes. Okay, I'll think about that. That seems maybe too complicated. It's already pretty complicated. Okay, <laughs> so... Um, we'll move on here. We just have a couple more sets. Oh, we have a song coming up. We do have a song, yeah. Um, but these are two things that you could cross off on your bingo board um, if you want to. And please, just for the fun of it. Just for fun of it. And yeah. please feel free to yell bingo. Um, our, loudly in your living room. Yes. <laughs> or loudly in the <laughs> to chat. To no one in particular. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of you have been doing the March, sorry, the February subscriber series. We're finishing up our second week this week. And there's one more week that starts on Monday, and you can still join. The third and last week for February is the song week, which I which I have to say I'm playing favorites, and it's actually the one that I'm most excited yeah. about. Um, there's nine singers involved, um, and they're excellent. I have their names, and I'm just going to tell you because it's it's spectacular. Um, Jefferson Hamer, Ellen Murray, Emer Arkins, Johnny Cuomo, Kevin Elam, who was on the session a while yeah. back, um, Brenda Castles, Martine de Cogan, uh, Matt Stapleton, and Ashley Davis. It's uh, it's quite a lineup. Right. The third week costs sixteen bucks, and you get um, one performance delivered per day to your email at two p.m. And there's also a website you can follow along on if you want. And um, because we had so many great singers, there's actually one of those days that you get two performances because we had more people than we yeah. had days, and we didn't want to miss out. So you can go over to the store in order to grab that um, store.tune.supply. I'll put the direct link in the. Um, in the chat here and that will be it for february subscriber series yep we are going to do a march one but let's leave that for later um okay and then the limelight series has been going on that's on tuesdays and saturdays we release for free to, to the public a uh, five minute video from a uh, tune supply artist one person every tuesday and saturday and the next one coming up is is pretty cool uh bernadette mcgavin um is going to be happening on saturday saturday yeah did you show the poster? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yep. There you go. We're already getting towards the end of February, amazingly. Yep. Almost. Um, that's on this channel and Facebook and all that. And yep. it's free. Okay. So, song time? I think it's time. Sounds like it's time for a song. Speaking of songs. Yeah. It's time for Speaking songs. Speaking of songs. Here's Matt Stapleton singing a song. Matt's also, of course, appearing on the Subscriber Series Week mm -hmm. coming up. Um, and let's go over to Matt. Okay. Hey everybody, so at, by this point we're all familiar with tonight's theme, which is the first tunes that you learned, but I thought I might mix things up here a little bit and sing for you the most recent song I learned. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. Um, this is called Lighthouse Light, which I heard on a Mary Black album, but it's actually written by a guy named Rye Cavanaugh from Session Americana. Um, I put this in the key of F for those of you that would like to play along at home, and uh, Please enjoy.
Lovely. Makes me think of um, when we used to be able to go to sessions at Hartley's. I was just going to say, it feels like we're back at Hartley's. Yeah. When I was putting that the video together, I thought like, oh, this is like yeah. fireplace going and sitting in the corner of Hartley's. That sounds just like that. Yeah. Um, for, right. for those of you who aren't in New York, there's a great session that Matt leads. He actually leads two sessions. Yes. Um, but the one I'm thinking of is at uh, Hartley's in Clinton Hill. I don't know if Hartley's is, has been doing anything during the pandemic. Do you? Well, I know that Matt was playing some tunes outdoors right. uh, when it was a little warmer. Um, I guess so they I serve food, still, so they might be open. Yeah, I think they're still open. And Matt, you'll have to tell us. Yeah. Um, but it's a very tiny bar. It's like the size of uh, a New York living room or a regular bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> Put yeah. It like that. It's really small. It's tiny, and um, just a few musicians can fit in, in the corner, and yeah. it's really great. So I hope that session comes back. Um, okay, we have uh, our words of the week. Now, if I was singing correctly, I would have put the words in the bingo boards, but I forgot. So we're just going to put them on screen. So if you're new here and you're wondering what's going on, well, this has nothing to do with music. Um, it is for the word lovers out there, the le lexophiles. Is that like, like, uh, uh, <laughs> what's it called when no you're idea. a lover of words? A lexophile? I Maybe, think. yeah. Um, and uh, this is from a book that has a word on each day of the year. So I um, always pick the exact day we're on and then another word from the same week. And you guys get to tell us in the comments what you think the words mean, which is also always hilarious. Okay, so the actual word for today is in, insinuendo. 
insinuendo is the first word. And Chris puts them on the screen in case you can't understand what I'm saying. OK, and then the other one is very strange. Um, it is capitalized, so it's re referencing somebody's name. And tapleism, ta tapleism, tapleism, what would you say? Tapleism. Tapleism? Yep. <laughs> okay. Okay, so those are your words for today. Let us know what you think they are. You can be serious or silly. I mean, I prefer silly, but you can you can say. Has anybody actually known any of the words that we've done so far? I don't think so. For real? No. I bet Mimi knows all of them. Probably. Um, She's just being humble by not putting the answer in yeah, the chat. Yeah. Um, okay, so let us know what you think, and then I'll just give you a quick reminder here before we um, go to our final set from John and Matt, and that is if you joined late, the big, the big thing is the fifth concert, the fifth ep epic Tune Supply concert that is happening on Sunday, Valentine's Day, um, 6 p.m. EST. Um, <laughs> that's 3 p.m. Pacific time. PST. PST. And what's the GMT? 11 p.m. GMT, if you really <laughs> want to stay up late. Um, yes, and it's on this channel. If you forget where it is or what it is or what time, just, just click on the Tune Supply um, icon there and you'll see you'll mm -hmm. see the link that will go live at 6 p.m. 70 folks from five countries this yeah. time. If That'd you cool. subscribe to the channel, I think you get a reminder. Or oh, you yeah. can set a reminder for the video or something, right? Yeah, if you click on work? the little, is it on that? There's there's a little there's a bird down hummingbird here. that you right can there. click on right there. Click it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that will, um, I think, give you notifications. I don't know. We don't know how any of this works, but. <laughs> okay. I think if you subscribe to the channel, you get It tells you? Prizes. You get prizes? Yeah. Don't tell them that. Yeah. Everybody, everybody's going to expect scones at their doorstep, yeah, well, which happen. we could make happen. We could, yeah. we could do that. OK, do we have any good answers to the, um, to the words this um, time? Let's see here. Tapleism, inability to keep time with your foot while playing the accordion. That's, That's great. An insinuendo, when you are named Sydney and you snidely suggest a snide suggestion. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's okay. good. OK, logophile. I was right. Yeah. That's good. OK. Um, let's see. Leg motion while playing, that's good. Okay. Insinuendo, a type of tango from Argentina. Insinuendo, quote, do you know how that t that tune goes? That's good. That's really good. Oh, insinuendo is living in sin. Ah, okay, good. that's yeah, simple, simple, but yeah. but classic. Some good ones here. Uh, Tapleism, the belief that your foot is, is keeping time. Yeah, good. <laughs> Okay, you guys are too good. This is amazing. Okay, so I'm going to tell you real quick what the, what these are. For those of people who are not logophiles, they're probably ready for more tunes. Yeah, yeah. So let's do um, insinuendo first. Okay, it's quite simple actually. It's in, an insinuated remark. It's a combined word from insinuation and innuendo. Interesting. So it's a um, insinuated, thinly veiled remark carrying some kind of secondary meaning. In other words, it's a portman portmanteau. Uh huh. Is that how you say that? I don't know. For it's some logophiles, we're not very good at it. It's good that you do the um, <laughs> word segment, I think. Okay, so um, now I just have to mention, in this book, there's like lots of extra factoids, right. which I like. So uh, I did not know this, but um, on uh, February 11th, 1812, the Massachusetts governor, Elbridge Gerry, Jerry, sorry, Jerry, stealthily redrew the boundaries of the state Senate electoral di districts to benefit his Democratic Republican Party. Mm. Apparently, that was one party at one time. That's crazy. OK, th this is the interesting part. When the Boston Globe happened to liken the shape of one of his redrawn district districts to that of a monstrous salamander, the word gerrymandering was born. So gerrymandering itself is a portmanteau. Yes. That's cool. fascinating, because I had always thought, I had always wondered where ger uh, gerrymandering came from. OK, yes. great. And then tapleism. Um, now, this the word itself is uh, is important, I think, for us in this moment in history. It means extreme optimism, even in the face of desperate circumstances. And it comes from a uh, Charles Dickens character named Mark Tapley, hmm. who, um, uh, I'll just read a little bit here. After, after a hellish Atlantic crossing, uh, he finds himself in Eden, a swampy, disease-ridden town populated by thieves and vagabonds, where he's succumbing to a life-threatening fever. Despite being at death's door, his natural positivity shines through, and he memorably, memorably describes his bedridden malaria condition as, quote, floored for the present, sir, very jolly. <laughs> so I tried to take example from him. Good. Not always successful. Yes. But. OK, those are your words for today. Um, we'll have some more next week. Um, hopefully, people like this as much as I do. Probably not, but we'll keep going for a while. Um, one more set of tunes. We have some more reels from Matt and John. Sounds good.
Welcome back everybody. Uh, we're going to continue with a set of reels and uh, the first reel that Matt learned is going to be in this set, the uh, Silver Spear. So Matt, when did you learn that on and on uh, what instrument? On, on guitar and when I was in college. I was lucky enough to go to college with both Isaac Alderson and Sam Amidon and uh, Isaac sat down with me one day, played that tune on his flute, and uh, there you go. Oh, cool. What about you? And the first street I learned, well, no, the first street I remember playing is in this set too. It's a uh, Maud Miller. Um, I went to Tom Don for lessons when I was a kid, and um, this was the one of the first reels that Tom uh, taught me, and. Um, so with those two, we're going to play the woman of the house also. So the woman of the house will be first in G and then um, Maud Miller in E minor. And um, then Silver Spear in D. Three times each, Matt. One, two, three, and...
you're going to end us off on? Yes. Very nice. Well, we're going to play one more set, but yeah. um, that was the last set from, from John, uh, and Matt. Yeah. John and Matt. Um, everybody's beards are looking really nice, I just want to say. Thank you. A and Matt. Yeah, Matt's. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> um, it'll be interesting to see what happens to all the beards that have been grown once uh, the restrictions are lifted. Yes. What do you think is going to happen? I There's going to be a rush on barbershops. <laughs> yes. I think. Yes, I'd say so. Prices are going to go up. Yeah, maybe men's beard cuts are going to cost the same as women's haircuts. Yeah. That would, that would be good. <laughs> they probably, yeah. probably do in New York, actually. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, Mimi sent in a picture uh, while we were uh, yes. playing that last I'm show set. It now. The crazy thing is, she, she said that um, this picture, she got it from Google Maps. Yeah. So this is actually us at Hartley's. This must have been, um, I don't know. You know, last year or something? what would have been crazy is if it was that last session at Hartley's where Will was about to go on a trip and he said to me, oh, yeah, yeah. do you think that I'm still going to be able to go on this trip? I think he was going to Taiwan or something. And yeah. I said, oh, yeah, I think it's going to be totally fine. Yeah. And that's probably the session it was. So Hartley's is not any bigger than this, actually. Like, no, this that's... is taken from the corner of Hartley's. Yeah. So you're seeing the entirety of the bar here. Yeah. And that, wow, your hair is much shorter, too. That's when I used to get haircuts. <laughs> Um, so that was uh, Caitlin and I there on the right, and Will Cushing, and, and Matt. of course Matt um, playing guitar. Different world, different world. So many people in that bar, and they're, none of them are wearing yeah. masks. So strange. So weird. If only they knew what yeah. was happening. Yeah. Come. <laughs> okay, so um, we have one more set, and actually Chris is going to tell you about this set. Yeah. Um, so on the theme of the first Irish tunes you ever learned, I have only been playing Irish tunes for what, four years now. Um, and I first started learning the accordion when, um, well, I had to for this Broadway show that we used to play in called Come From Away. And hopefully we will play it again. <laughs> um, so I, that's, the, that's why I uh, ended up uh, starting the C sharp D box. And I learned like, you know, the music for the show and it was really simple. And then I asked Caitlin like, hey, can you recommend some tunes for me to learn? Like if I wanted to start learning some Irish tunes. So I think Caitlin said, okay, well, just go over to my YouTube channel and find some video on there. And so I did. Um, and I found a video of Caitlin and her band, um, More Below Range, I guess they were called Prankhorn then, yes. um, playing three, well, two relatively uncommon tunes, I think, um, The Black Rogue and uh, Maze of Selma. We do and, play The Black Rogue at Mario's yes, frequently. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and then Out on the Ocean, but Out on the Ocean in A major. And of course, not knowing any better, I thought, oh yeah, this is a great set of tunes to learn. So those were the first three tunes that I learned. I think the first actually was Maids of, um, of Selma. Which is not a common tune. Completely not at yeah. all. I led you astray. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> so I learned how to play Out on the Ocean in A before I learned it in G. Um, I guess appropriate for a C-sharp D box, though. And but I, you know, that, that's actually how I learned it. And the reason I play it yeah. in A frequently is because I learned it in yeah. A originally, too. Because yeah. I come from a weird tune background. Yeah. Um, so I learned these tunes while I was sitting around in the dressing room of Come From Away in Toronto um, in 2016. That was my first Irish tunes. And so we're going to play them. <laughs> um, we're going to play that same set, and we are going to play out, in, uh, out on the Ocean in A major as the last tune here. So just if you know it in G, which is, uh, at least in, in these parts of the world, the more common key, just move everything up a step. Yeah. It's, it's so easy. easy. It's yeah. easy. <laughs> Just move it up. <laughs> so we'll end off with these, um, and then we'll we'll talk a, a, a bit at the at the end. But um, let's the play other some tunes first. the oh, other sorry. ridiculous thing about learning this set from Caitlin's video on YouTube is I didn't realize this at the time, but it was extraordinarily fast. <laughs> I have no idea how I managed to learn the tunes from this video. Maybe you slowed it down with I, the little wheel. I thing. must have because like I just listened to the video again, you know, for the first time in years, and it's so fast I could barely keep up. Um, as Chris said earlier today, that was back when we used to play fast. Yes. <laughs> but we'll play these at a reasonable speed. Yes. Um, two times each. And just remember, if you do know Ma Maids of Selma, the B part is, is twice as long as the normal B part. Yeah. Okay. I also, I also didn't realize that when I first learned Maids of Selma. It's I just thought that was normal. Tune. I didn't even notice that it had gone around twice. <laughs> I should have given you some regular tunes to yeah, learn probably. first. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Okay, here we go. If you're playing along, this first tune starts on an A chord, not on a B chord. Uh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
The G kind of mutes it a little bit, at least on the fiddle. Um, so if you don't play it in A, I recommend it. Yep. It's, a, it's great. Um, I was going to show you Toast here in real life. He came up and has been sitting on the heater next to me, which is one of his favorite spots. But just at the last B part, he jumped, he left. Yeah. He must not have liked it in A. Probably prefers it in G. <laughs> now he's sitting with his back to us. He's pouting. Yeah, he doesn't he didn't like that. Greatly. <laughs> All right, so um, thanks for coming out and playing bingo with us. Um, I know it's always a little chaotic when we play bingo, but I, I have to say it's pretty fun. Yeah. It's hard to find ways online to actually keep, keep interacting when we can't actually see each other. So I appreciate you <laughs> taking yeah. the time to grab the virtual bingo board and play along. Um, do we have everybody's addresses? We do, right? Because we know Gail and Brian Phoenix. Yeah, and Patrick has emailed us. Great. So we'll be in touch about his t-shirt. Cool. Yeah. Maybe on every 10 sessions. I mean, hopefully we won't have to do this very much longer, but we should yes. play bingo on every 10 yeah, sessions or something. Yeah. Well, we'll do it again. It's, it's pretty fun. Um, okay. So do you want to do thank yous? Yeah. Um, John, Matt, thanks again, guys. Uh, it's great to have you on for like the 20th time. <laughs> um, thank you for guiding us through session number 60. Yes. Um, and of course, thank you, Aiden and Cesar for joining us from Madrid. It's really cool have you guys on and of course to have a brand new type of music that we've never had yes asturian tunes absolutely cool. yeah we'll have to have more of that yeah. actually they they are on the concert they on are yeah together with alan murray yeah mm -hmm. that'll be great mm -hmm. um okay so so don't forget about the concert on uh, sunday at 6 p.m um if you are able uh, to throw a few bucks into our jar from which we pay uh, our guest leaders and um, special guests that would be lovely if not um, thank you for joining us as usual and mm -hmm. we'll be back next week with Colin Farrell and Matt Mancuso um, looking forward to that one Should yes be Matt hasn't been on since yeah. the beginning um, and actually Colin when was the last time Colin was on a long time. he was on with Shane and Dan down Lowry oh that's right okay a long time ago um, but that that will be really fun oh yeah. and uh, Declan Masterson Declan's on yeah as well yeah. And then I'll just mention for those who are still here, the following week is going to be very interesting. We don't have all the details yet, but Marta Cook is putting together a um, celebration of Pipers. Yes, I've been uh, reading about this. Yeah, in emails. It's, 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 it's still in progress, um, but it's going to feature Pipers from here in the U.S. and Ireland. And um, it, it, it is going to be great. Yeah. I don't know, we don't know all the details yet because Marta's curating it, but it's, yeah. it's going to be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So um, that's two weeks from tonight. Also, just want to say, I know some people mentioned it in the chat. We learned today that Chick Corea passed away. Of course, if you don't know Chick, he's a legendary, um, incredible jazz um, pianist and uh, was really influential in the, well, I think he really launched like the jazz fusion um, genre and he was an incredible musician and he will be greatly missed. We would try to cover one of his uh, tunes if we felt we could do it justice, but um, I think we it would don't. be more of an insult than, a, than an honor. <laughs> Uh, if we were to try to play his his brilliant music, but we'll listen to some yeah. of it tonight, and hopefully yes. you can as well. Uh, I've enjoyed so. seeing him in concert a number of times, and actually, I'll tell a, a quick story. Um, when we were this was maybe ten years ago, I was in New York rehearsing for a Broadway musical called A Christmas Story, and we had a band rehearsal at um, what's the studio over on Twelfth Avenue, like in Midtown there. The Are one is Greer? like no. no, it's like the one big studio where all the Broadway shows oh, rehearse for their bands. Um, um, and they had to move our studio at the last minute. We we're going to have our sits probe, which is like when the band and the cast all play together for the first time. It sounds right? like a medical procedure, but it's not. Yeah. Um, we were going to have the sits probe in their like great, beautiful, big studio, and they had to move us at the last second to a smaller room, and we were all crammed in there, and people had to carry keyboards down the hallway. Well, they had to do that because Chick Corea had decided he needed the <laughs> studio that we were in <laughs> to rehearse for his upcoming tour or something so we walked by the window and there's like a beautiful studio with chick and like two other people and, and then like no. 50 of us in this tiny studio down the hall but, did you go in and say hi uh oh no no did not. yeah um but that's the story of how chick Corea kicked us out of rehearsal i feel like that's a very new york story yeah like all new yorkers have a story like that of yeah. some sort yeah <laughs> well that's cool very cool um anyway i think that's it for yes. us 
from yeah. uh, Lower Manhattan. So from Lower Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> Um, see you next week. Uh, no, see you on Sunday. See you Sunday, on Sunday, Sunday for, the, for concert. the concert. And then we'll see you next week um, with Colin and Matt. Um, yeah. Have a great week and happy Valentine's Day. Okay, good night.